Welcome to the annual college fair. Tonight, uh, the college fair starts around 7 p.m. After this presentation, we will move on to the college fair. My presentation tonight is to talk about how do we pay for college? How do we pay for college? Those are good questions. How do, how do we take care and make sure that our kids, well, our kids will have a finance, a, a future? How do we pay for that? All right? Colleges today can range from 20000 to 40000 per year. If you multiply that times four years, that's $160,000 for four years. And a lot of our kids don't get finished with college in four years. It takes longer. It could be five years, all right, and more. So it's like paying the mortgage. This is what we're paying as adults today. We're paying mortgage of $200,000, $300. So how do we help our kids pay for college, all right? Well, we're going to talk about that today. It is known as FAFSA. And FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It's free. And where does this stuff come from? Well, we're going to talk about where it comes from. FAFSA comes from the federal government, right? The United States federal government. They spend over $150 billion helping people get grants, getting loans, uh, be part of a work-study program. They're helping people to go to college or to further their career, such as vocational schools. So this is one aspect of uh, funding your college. Basic eligibility requirements for student aid. Student aid, which what I'm talking about today, is known as financial aid. What are the basic requirements? Well, you got to have a high school diploma or you got to have a GED. You must be working toward a degree or a certificate program. You must be enrolled in the eligible, eligible program. Okay, in other words, the program that you're in, the college, university, or vocational program, must uh, uh, satisfy certain requirements. And you must also register with the Selective Service. Selective Service is a process where you'll be eligible for a giraffe uh, if, if we should go to war or have or during wartime. And that's a very simple procedure when you get 18 years of age. Your child must go down to the public service, fill out a little questionnaire, and then he satisfied that requirement. Has there been a draft? Hasn't been the draft in over 40 years. So uh, I don't think we really have anything to worry about there. Types of financial aid. We have grants and scholarships, and we have loans, and we have something called the work-study program. Grants and scholarships are money that does not have to be repaid. Someone can get a grant because of their uh, need, or someone can get a grant because of their academic achievement. Or scholarship, same procedure. Uh, academic achievement or athletic ability. Loans. Loans are which you borrow money under the federal loan program. And then we have work study program which allow you to earn money while going to school. So we're going to talk about three types of uh, financial aid that are available to our kids. But before we can get to that, the federal law says, the United States federal government says that in order to be eligible for financial aid, you can have no conviction under federal or state law in possession of drugs of any kind. Okay? If there are any questions or concern about that, there is a number that you can actually call. 1-800-4-FED-80 or 1-800-433-3243. Not to worry. Uh, I did pass out handouts for everyone to use. Uh, what you guys have there is what I have on the board. So just look through that. If you have any questions, let me know. Grants and scholarships. Grants, like I said, can be based on merit or can be based on uh, based on need. All right? In other words, include grants for other students with disabilities. Okay? So people with disabilities, uh, students with disabilities, can uh, get uh, awarded money because of disability. Or it can be based on your academic achievement. You can also get a grant. Scholarships. Scholarships, on the other hand, is based on academic achievement. Let's say you got a 3.5, 4.0 GPA, or it could be based on academic performance. And these two particular uh, funds, grants and scholarships, do not have to be paid back. Types of grants. We have the Federal Pell Grant. We have the Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grants. We have the Iraq and Afghanistan, Afghanistan Service Grant. And we also have the Teacher Education Assistance for College and Higher Education Teacher Grant. The Pell Grant. It's only for undergraduates, right? So if a student's new in school, two-year school, four-year school, having received their bachelor's degree, can be awarded Pell Grant. 
And he, remember, these are grants that the money does not have to be paid back. Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grants or campus-based grants work to students with exceptional need. So, if a student has some type of disability or some type of uh, mental or physical disability, uh, they could qualify for this particular grant. Also, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan service grants, that is for if you had a parent or legal guardian that died in the uh, Iraq or Afghanistan war, you'd be eligible for that grant. And then we have teacher education assistance for college and higher education teachers grants. And if the student that's attending that college or university is interested in pursuing a degree, in, uh, a degree in teaching, this is a particular uh, grant that would be offered for that particular person. Federal student loans. We have subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans. Subsidized loans are for, pe for students who have a financial need. And unsubsidized loans are available to students regardless of need. Now, students are responsible for the interest that occurs. So if a student takes a subsidy loan or unsubsidized loan, there'll be interest occurring. In other words, let's say I have a loan my first year of college, and I don't, I don't have to pay that loan back until I graduate from college, but interest will be occurring. Every month, interest will be added to that particular loan. I'm not responsible to pay it until I'm finished, but interest is occurring. And like I said before, loans can be deferred until graduation. Other loans, we have the Stanford loan, and we have the Federal Perkins loans. The Stanford loans can be subsidized or unsubsidized. <clears throat> Federal Perkins loans are campus-based, low-interest, fixed-rate loans. Now, for this loan, it is based on exceptional financial needs, so you, if, if, you, if you have a, uh, a financial issue, this loan is available. However, there is no interest charge until repayment, until you graduate, until you graduate college. In other words, if I took out this Federal Perkins loan and in my first year of college, I continue to take it out for the next four years, I will not have to pay any interest. That fifth year or that fourth year when I graduate, I will start to pay payments on this loan and the interest will start then. Compared to the other loan we just spoke about where the interest was being secured, every single month. We have a PLUS loan, which allows for parents with good credit to borrow money to help pay for education costs for the dependent, undergrad students only. So parents can actually borrow money to help the child, or we can get private loans. Private loans can come from private institutions or banks. Work-study program. Work-study program is a way for the student to get some extra money, all right, to help pay for college. Work-study programs take place on campus uh, in a variety of different fields. You might work in the cafeteria. You might work, let's say, in an office. You might work in the dorms. Uh, depending where the need is, students will get certain jobs. You might work in the library. You might help, up, help with the reception desk. You might help putting books back, all right? But it is a work-study program where students can actually apply for and they will get a particular job, and that money is used to help pay for college. How to apply for student aid? Well, like I said, it is a free application. It's available online. Now, you also need to fill this online form out once a year. So every single year, I have to fill out a FAFSA. I must. All right. If I don't fill it out, I won't get the financial aid. A lot of people believe once I fill it out, we're done. Not necessarily. Every single year you must fill it out. Every single year you must qualify for it. Here's the key. There's a limited amount of federal aid available, which means you should complete the form as soon as possible. In other words, the government has all this money set aside. This money is to help students for post-secondary education. As students start applying for their post-secondary education, start applying for FAFSA, the money, is starting getting to, the money is starting to be used up. Now, if I wait, say I'm a parent, and I'm waiting to the last moment to apply for my financial aid, there's not too much money in the pot now. Now when I apply for my financial aid, and I'm in need and I qualify, they will, I will get money, but I might not get as much money as that first person who was the first person that applied. Because we're down at the end, money now is running out. So, so much money is actually put away. So the key here is to apply for financial aid as soon as possible.
are some deadlines. The federal deadline says if you're applying, let's say, for um, school for this year, you should apply by June 3rd, 2017. If you're applying the state deadline for June, June 1st of 2016. But you should always check with your college or vocational school to make sure what is the deadline. Because they might have their own uh, time when paperwork should actually be in at the college level or at the university level. There are a couple options of filing for financial aid. All right? I know a lot of people don't like or don't really use the internet, but we're in, we're in a internet society now, but there are still options. Online is recommended because that's a lot easier, a lot faster, but you can also complete a PDF file for the FAFSA. Uh, you still have to access a computer and uh, has to access online, but it's a little different. You can actually download the, the paperwork to actually complete. Or you can cl complete paperwork by calling this uh, toll-free number and they will actually send the material to you if you just complete, and you would send it back, which is a lot longer. The best way is would be online, which is recommended. Documents needed to file for FAFSA. To complete a FAFSA for the 2015-2016 academic year, you will need your tax return. You will need last year's tax return, which is 2014. You will also need your W-2 form. And... Like I said, tax return it could be any of these, 1040, 1040A, 1040E, and you will need your parents, and, and most likely you are applying financial aid for your child, so they will need your parents' tax. And, and when you do the online application, it's pretty simple. I mean, it, it does take a little time, but it tells you if, let's say, you use a 1040 form for your financial aid, for your taxes, and when you go through the uh, online application, it says to you, uh, what form are you using? You, you, you punch in 1040, and then it starts asking you questions. And it will direct you to the, the number on the tax form. So one of the questions might be, okay, to get this answer, refer to question 9 on tax form 1040. And all you do is put the answer in. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. But it does take some time. Documents needed to file FAFSA. Well, you need your bank statements. Okay. You also need your social security card. You also need driver's license, if you have one, or some type of uh, permanent ID. Or you could have a non-driver's license, it will also be uh, acceptable. And you need maybe an alien registration or permanent resident card, if you are not a citizen of the United States. So see, these are some areas that you definitely will need uh, to actually fill out the FAFSA. So when I'm sitting in front of that computer, this is what I take out. I get my bank statement so I know how much money I have on my accounts, checking, savings, um, uh, okay. uh, social security card, I put that out, driver's license, I have that out, and if I don't have this and I'm uh, a permanent resident or in the United States, I have my uh, registration card out. So these are all things I need before I can actually sit down and complete the form, as well as my uh, federal tax form. 